It's the Canadian Cancer Society, which is run by philanthropist Andrea Seal, if I can speak today, acknowledge the LGBTQ plus community on a webpage dedicated to cervical cancer under the page Words Matter section. The nonprofit said that many non-binary people and transgender men have mixed feelings or feel distance from the term cervix. I wonder why. We recognize that many trans men and non-binary people may have mixed feelings about or feel distant from words like cervix, the statement said. You may prefer other words such as front hole. We recognize that the limitations of the words we used while also acknowledging the need for simplicity. Another reason we use the word cervix is to normalize the reality that men have these body parts too. Well, as far as I remember my biology, I don't recall the male anatomy having a cervix. Have you? You can put in the comments below and let me know because I don't recall in biology the men having any kind of cervix. But let's keep moving. Cervical cancer occurs when a growth of cells form inside the cervix, the lower part of the uterus, which connects to the vagina. Now, I don't recall a man having a uterus or a JJ either. Most of the time, it's caused by the common sexuality, the common sexuality transmitted infection, human papillomas virus, HPV. The cancer can be treated with radiation, chemotherapy, medicine, and surgery to remove the cells. According to the Canadian Cancer Society, anyone with a cervix, regardless of gender or sexual orientation, should get regular cerv cervical cancer screenings or pap smears by the age of 23. Okay, so what they're saying here is that if you're a man and you identify as a woman, you should be getting regular cervical cancer screenings or pap smears, even though you may not have a uterus or a cervix or a JJ. You should get a, a regular cervical cancer screening or pap smear. I feel like... You know, when you, you see that show where there's like a setup and it's like um, a prank. Yeah, I feel like this is a huge experimental prank that the world is going through, especially North America. And one day someone is going to say, ha ha, I got you. It was just a prank. That's how I feel. I feel like that's what we're living in right now. But let me continue. The nonprofit profit added that people need to get screened every three years, regardless of them taking testosterone or not. It's important to tell your healthcare provider if you're taking testosterone, testosterone because this can cause changes to cervical tissue that could affect your test results. And it goes on and on and on and on. Well, the response to this um, stance has, it's not going well. I mean, I live in Canada and to me it's preposterous to hear that a very popular uh, charity that people donate millions of dollars to is taking such a stance. It's like us women, we don't exist anymore. You know, we are accommodating men who are supposed identifying as women. And like, what's, what's happening to real women who, that God has created us? What's happening to them? What's happening to us? I wonder. Anyhow, so Here's some of the response. Some of the commenters says, uh, woke Canadian Cancer Society suggests trans women should talk to the doctor about getting screened for cervical cancer. Cervix? I have a damn cervix. This is just gross. You will never receive another donation from me ever again, somebody else said. Another wrote, how un uncaring are you to ignore the identity biolog biologic biology, and feelings of people who actually have a cervix. You need to be ashamed. And it goes on and on and on and on. It may be time to walk away from the Canadian Cancer Society. They have lost 
the plot. Another person said. Another uh, Canadian says, I guess the Canadian Cancer Society doesn't want or donations. Why else would they insult women like that? Exactly my point. What you have insulted women. You have just insulted the women that your charity is supposed to be supporting by removing these words and, you know, catering to men who don't have a cervix, don't have a uterus, don't have a JJ. And I know you're going to say, well, there's surgeries that can do all of these things. Well, I'm going to be talking about that in the next story coming up, but God created women with vajayjays, with uterus, with ovaries, with a cervix, and he certainly didn't create man that way because men have different, a different anatomy, a different way for, for certain reasons. This is how God has created male and female, and I wish that we would just wake up from this, this prank that we're living in.